Hey y'all, this is Stacy with The Craft Room Diaries. Thanks for visiting. Today I'll be sharing with you the process I use for printing photos as well as a review of my favorite printer. I've seen a lot of folks ask questions about sizing photos to three by four for Project Life and even for like apps to use and how to size them or printing them yourself or even where to print or, you know, using... Um, Mer merging two of them together so that you can actually save on a little bit of photo paper if you are printing them. Um, also, I've seen a lot of questions about photo printers and which ones are the best, which ones are recommended, and also the best printers for um, print and cut in design space. So in the next few minutes, I'll share with you the hows and whys of how I print photos and why I actually use this method. In my first few years of scrapbooking, I would have tons of photos printed, not knowing what I would end up using in layouts. They were usually cheap, um, 10 cents a photo or something like that from Walgreens. And I always ended up printing way more than I could possibly use. And of course, those of us that love photos can't bear to get rid of them. So we end up with boxes and boxes of, you know, extra leftover photos like this. Okay. Um, the Canon selfie became popular around the same time, but I just kept feeling like it was too limiting and really could only be used for photos, not for journaling, not for making journal cards or any other printing needs. So my husband overheard my thoughts one day and allowed me to borrow this printer that he had bought for travel. And I fell in love with it. And I'll tell you why, I'll tell you a little bit about it in the next few minutes and why I love it so much. But first to the sizing. I size my photos in Photoshop's basic program with a few simple steps. You can use this method whether you're printing your photos yourself or sending them off to be printed. In Photoshop, the first thing that I'm going to do is select Open. And I'm going to choose the two photos that I'm going to be working with for um, to put these two photos on one 4x6 that I'm going to be sizing these two. I'm going to have two 3x4 photos on one 4x6. So once my two photos are open, I'm going to, under File, I'm going to choose New in order to create a blank canvas, okay? So once that um, once that option opens, I'm gonna make the size, you do need to um, put the size the way you want it. So I'm gonna have it six inches wide by four inches in height, and I'm gonna choose the orientation as landscape. I'm also gonna change the resolution to 300 so that I get just a, a much better quality resolution on this. So now I'll choose create, and my blank canvas will be open. So once that blank, blank canvas is there, I'm going to go back and select the first photo. Once that photo is open, under select, under the tab select, choose select all, or you can use command, you can use command A instead. I am, I am using a Mac, so it's command A. You may have a different one if you're using a PC. So I'm going to choose select all or command A, which is going to give me a little marker box around there. So now I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go back to my blank canvas, which is labeled untitled. I could give it a name, but it's not going to stay here for very long. And then I'm going to paste that photo onto there. Um, with the little boxes still there, with the select marker boxes still there, I can move it around. Um, now, you could leave it like this if you wanted to have a white border printed. So you can use those um, and you can size those. So now I'm going to go back and get the other photo and do the same thing. I chose select all copied it and now I'm going to paste it onto this as well and as you can see they came up about the same size so if you wanted to have a white border around your photos which I oftentimes do you could leave it like this or you could resize it to where it fills up the entire thing so if you wanted to leave it like this at this point you would simply go under layers and choose merge visible layers or if you wanted to size it to where they were completely connected um, to fill up the entire 4 by 6 I guess is what you would call it, to where they have no white border, okay? I'm just going to cl click on each layer over here on the box at the bottom, and I can then resize those to fill up the entire 4 by 6 okay? So if you wanted to have it this way, you would again just finish that off and choose under layers, choose merge visible layers, and then that's what you would be printing. So once I've got the layers flattened, 
I'm simply going to save this. Um, I'm going to save as under file, do save as, and just make sure when you're saving it that you are saving it as a JPEG and not saving it in Photoshop. It is going to give you the option to save. Sometimes it just comes up automatically as Photoshop. I do usually save these on my computer, not in the cloud, which I think would be easier, especially if you're making a file to send off for photo processing, or even if you're setting yourself up a file to print all of your photos yourself for a layout. So now for the printer. This is the Canon Pixma IP110. Um, I traveled a crop, so the portability of it is fantastic. I can, as you can see, it's very small. It's actually about... Uh, a little bit almost the same size as my laptop of course a little bit thicker than that but it's very super super lightweight um it opens here for you to load paper in and of course your photo comes out of this bottom part right here so i use it to print any size photo from three three by four to eight and a half by eleven I use it to print journaling on cards. I also use it to print photos of all sizes, three by four, four by six, five by seven, up to eight and a half by 11, which is great. Also, if you're, if you're doing any type of print then cut feature, or if you want specialized journaling, perhaps on a larger layout, um, because it's not strictly a photo printer, you do not need to specify, you do need to specify what type of paper you are printing on. If not, the print quality won't be up to par. I use it to print, again, for my uh, Cricut Print Then Cut projects. And when I do that, I generally use a matte photo paper because I do find that it just looks so much better than printing on cardstock, okay? I find the ink cartridges to be pretty economical. Um, the, the, black, the black and color cartridges generally run about $20 to $22, although I just picked up this combo of both of them for $32 on Amazon. <laughs> I should have ordered more, right? Because um, I use I use them quite often, you know. Um, but they last me for months, and I do an awful lot of printing, okay? The printer itself runs about $150 on Amazon, and I usually end up buying these 400-pack of photo paper, um, which ran about for 400, uh, 400 sheets, ran me about $21. So there are a couple of drawbacks that I will note, just like with anything else, okay? It is not wireless to a computer, but it is wireless to a phone or an iPad that you can use AirPrint, but not to not to a standard computer, okay, or a laptop, okay? Um, although anytime if you're printing with those devices, it is going to limit you to a 4 by 6 print side, size, okay? I do all of my printing from a Mac, though, so I, I, I do need to hardwire it, which really doesn't bother me for the advantages of this of what this printer can do and the portability of it functionality of it as well so that's all the details of my photo printing process thanks for joining me today i hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you did please give me a thumbs up and share it with a scrappy friend and if you're a new visitor to my channel please consider subscribing i hope you visit the craft room diaries again soon and i hope you're having a happy scrappy day